I wanted to talk about buying an R1 as your first bike, or even any 1000cc at that. I mean, if you're gonna be mostly street riding it, all the 1000s, the X10, the Shiksha 1000, the CBR 1000, the differences between those bikes are pretty minuscule when riding out here on the streets. I mean, at that point, it's kind of just how they look. You like how they look more, one more than the other. Or, I mean, the only difference you'd be able to tell really on the bikes is when you get them on a track and you can really push them to their full potential, but not out here on the streets. What kind of sparked this, this topic for me was I had a buddy offer to buy my bike and I was like, have you ridden before? And he was like, no. And I was like, there's no way I would sell you this bike as your friend. So I'm going to go ahead and answer the question. Should you buy an R1 as your first bike? And the answer is, hell no, to the no, no, no. I'll say it one more time. Hell no, to the no, no, no. <laughs> That's your simple answer there. I mean, if you have a friend that tells you that you should start on a 1000cc sport bike, all right, 1000cc sport bike, they're not your friend. Like, you need to go get some new friends. There's no way anyone in their right mind that has had experience riding is going to tell you that it's okay to start on something this powerful. <laughs> like, absolutely no way anyone with any sort of common sense is going to say that. Because this bike is just absolutely insane. We gotta get over. Oh, my favorite turn, my favorite turn. And they just paved it. Oh, oh, let's see if you can drag me here. Drag me, drag me. Oh, 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 I can't get fast enough. Dang it, the minivan. The minivan squad is messing it up. Screw, screw, screw. Welcome to Atlanta traffic, baby! There's lots of reasons to back up not buying a 1000cc motorcycle as your first bike. The number one reason is... I mean, we can start off with the elephant in the room. This bike is just way too powerful for someone that's never ridden on two wheels to hop on... I need gas. To hop on and try and ride. Like, I'll demonstrate here in a second. This bike will come up on you on first, second, and third gear. The power that this bike puts down is just absolutely insane. In case you missed it, I'll do it one more time. Literally nuts, man. Like, within a couple of seconds, you can be doing triple digit speeds. <laughs> the acceleration that G-forces on this bike is just absolutely insane. I mean, and not just this bike in general, a 1000 cc, even a 600 cc motorcycle, the power that that bike puts down, I just, I don't understand how it's legal. Like, whose idea was it, let's give the public vehicles that can do 0 to 100 in under 3 to 4 seconds. Like, that's just <laughs> insane and make it super cheap. I mean, if you compare it to a car, you can get a 1,000cc bike for like three, four grand. I mean, anyone, if you save up, I mean, so it's gonna take you some longer than others. That's not out of out of reach for a lot of people. Like, people can buy cars for more than that. I'm actually on my way to meet up with a buddy to get some photos of the R1 and some videos. Oh, I see him. I see him over there. He's chilling. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. He's getting pictures. Check him out on Instagram. Dope photos, dope pictures. All sorts of dope shit. With the CBR 600 double R. I like the windshield, man. New jacket? Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Swag a little bit. Heck yeah. Did you just wash her? Did what? Did you just wash her? Oh, hell no, dude. I haven't washed it in like four months. How's this thing so spotless, then? Sitting under a, uh, cover. a cover. <laughs> I think I'm just used to the mat. So, like, when I see a shiny bike, I'm like, damn. 
this little 600 double R this was actually my second bike I had a red one back in the day love that thing man awesome bike sold it for the 1000 double R miles were getting high but this is a great bike if you're looking for a first bike, this would be a great bike as your first bike. Not this, all right? Not this. But we'll get to those reasons in just a second. So, anyways, back to what I was saying about the power. This bike is not very forgiving. Like, if you come into a corner too hot, if you're coming in, a car pulls out in front of you, if you're coming in too hot, if you're doing anything stupid on this bike, you need to understand how to fully control this thing. Because this bike is a not light. <laughs> like, this is a fat, fat girl. She's thick. Thick with three C's, boy. Stupid, dumb thick, man. She's gonna die, to be completely honest. But, I can't throw this bike around like I can throw around my 600 double R, like he can, if we were in the twisties. That's where these bikes kind of start to level out like like he'll be able to keep up in the turns because you can only take a turn so fast you know what I'm saying the only time I'm really gonna pull away from him if we we're riding in like the twisties are on the track is in the straights like in those straights that's where this bike really shines this bike's meant to go high speeds and it's so much more stable like that bike at 120 versus this bike at 120 huge difference this bike's not wobbling around. This bike's planted on the highway at high speeds. Secondly, people try and argue that this bike has power mills now and tracks control. So it's like, oh yeah, great for a first rider. No. <laughs> Even this bike in P mode is still insane. Like yes, the throttle's not as sensitive, but you still get the same amount of power. The only thing that they change the, the throttle sensitivity. So it's a little bit more smoother in how that power comes on. And honestly, sometimes it's nicer to cruise in B mode, let's say I'm riding around town, than for me to be in A mode. Like, it doesn't make sense for me riding around my R1 in A mode as I'm heading to Kroger. <laughs> like, this doesn't make any sense. B mode's a lot smoother. I don't ride it that much in B mode because I don't really ride in the rain, but there are times where, like, the jerkiness and the aggressiveness of the spike, it's nice to have that option to tune it down, but it's still a lot to handle. Like, it's, you're still on the same bike. A 1,000cc bike that's not very forgiving. Like, this bike, just because it's in B mode, doesn't mean it goes from a 1,000cc to a 250. Like, it's still a 1,000cc, very powerful, very quick bike. And if you're not comfortable with that front wheel coming up, you're not, like, you <laughs> Because there's lots of times where I'm in full throttle and I don't even mean for it to come up and that front wheel is starting to hover. And you have to be comfortable with, with that. Like, you have to be ready for that. And you have to understand how to control the bike when it's doing that. And let me give you all some background here. I've had uh, five or six bikes. So my first bike was an FRI. Second bike was that bike, a 600 double R. Third bike was an R6. And then my fourth bike, my fourth bike was... Yeah, we can go over there. My fourth bike was a CBR 1000 double R, which I had for about two years. And then this is my, so this is my fifth bike then. Yeah, this is my fifth bike. Yamaha R1. So I've had 1000cc bikes for a little bit. Now I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm the most experienced rider ever, really. But I had that CBR for two years. Like I was very comfortable on that bike extremely comfortable, probably a little too comfortable on that bike. So on this R1 when I got on it, it's just a completely different beast, man. You want to ride it? You sure? Why not, man? Bro, try it out, man. She's a lot of fun. <laughs> You should be good. Right. If you want to change the mode, you can. Oh, I'm good, dude. There's standard A and B. <laughs> you sure? All right. Standard. You want track control turned all the way up? What is that? So the, the wheel spins, it'll catch it? I'll turn it all the way up. I'll turn it all the way up. That's it right there. So you can turn it down. I don't think the wheel's going to spin. I'm going to go really slow. All right. It's a lot of bike for me. All right. They seem so tiny. <laughs> I'm dead. All right, let's go. 
Sick. That's crazy. It's a big old bike, dude. Oh, it's huge, man. It's massive. <laughs> thing I can flick around like it's nothing. I full throttle it. I mean, I'm still going quick, but does it, it doesn't feel anywhere close to how the R1 feels. Like if I, if I grab a, a, a handful of throttle the R1, it's fucking game over. This thing is so easy to ride. <laughs> And I mean, a 600 is not, is not a slow bike at all, but dang, compared to the R1, I forget how light this thing feels, man. Yes, yeah, so if you're going to start with something, start with something like this. Even this is a lot, but this is better than starting on a 1,000cc motorcycle. Riding on the road's got to soak for you. Why? You have to get out of first gear. Oh. <laughs> I know, it's stupid, man. I apologize, this video has been all over the place, but to summarize basically the gist of my answer of should you get Should you get an R1 or any 1000cc bike as your first bike? Hell no. One, you're not going to respect the power. Like, if, if this is your first bike, like, you're just not going to understand how truly powerful this bike is. Just the low end torque and even the pull at the top end, like, you're going to be like, yeah, it's fast, but you're going to get used to it really quickly. Whereas if you start on a 250, you're going to learn how to, you're going to be a better rider. Like, it'll take shorter time for you to learn how to be a better rider. Because on the 250, you're not focused on trying to control the power of the bike. Like a 250 is quick compared to other cars, but it's not quick compared to bikes. So you're not like stressed out with this bike. If I grab too much throttle on first, that front wheel's coming up, I'm flying. I can do 90 in first gear without even having to shift. All right, so starting a smaller bike takes that away. Okay, so you'll become a better rider. You'll learn the technicalities of riding a little bit easier. It just makes the whole process much easier. Secondly, if I drop this bike, I don't even want to think about the amount of money that you would have to spend on this bike to get it fixed versus a 250. This is an expensive premium bike. Like this isn't a cheap bike to fix or to maintain to be completely honest. Versus a 250 or even a 600, like you're not going to be, parts aren't as expensive, parts aren't as rare. And honestly, like there are so many people buying 250s and 600s that you could sell it and maybe not even take a loss if you got a good enough deal on it. Every single bike, all four of the ones I've owned prior to this one, I've either made money on or I didn't lose it after riding, putting several thousand miles on it. Like I didn't lose any money. I was either able to sell it for the same price or I was able to make money off of it. So when people are like, oh, you have to worry about buying a 250 then selling it, then buying a 600, you're gonna lose money. You're not gonna lose any money. If you're smart about it, you won't lose any money. Let's put it that way. Okay, and is it really worth your life to save three, four hundred dollars? Is it really worth putting your life in danger? I don't know, for me, no. For you, maybe, yes. <laughs> That's kind of a, a personal question, but to me, heck no. I'd rather spend that money, but not everyone's the same way. But like I said, I haven't lost money on a bike. Get yourself a 250 or a 600 if you feel comfortable on that. I'm not recommending the 600, but that's better than a thousand. <laughs> I'll take that, that's better than 1,000. Pro riders still ride these types of bike on the track. So the fact that you think you have no experience and you can hop on a bike like this is just arrogant. But like I said, who am I? I'm just a random guy on YouTube. Do whatever the heck you want to do with your life. Don't have to listen to me. Get your one thousand. You want to do it? Whatever. Just be safe. That's all I ask, man.
But anyways, that's my opinion on it. Once again, I apologize for this video being all over the place. I did not expect me and my buddy to do all that filming, but we got some cool shots of the R1 finally. Hopefully I can get some new intro footage, maybe this intro on this video. We'll have the drone footage or even the flyby footage that we were able to get. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Like and subscribe. I'm telling ya, we're about to step up our video game. You do not want to miss it. Fast Lane D, check it out, baby. Peace.